and would then have to win three games in three days. A lot of work to be done between now and then. Five games remaining in the regular season, but a step in the right direction last night. Luke Johnson, who is co-host of the Super Talk Eagle Hour, uh, what a great scene last night at Reed Green. Packed house, big-time atmosphere, maybe a little tense at halftime with Southern Miss trailing by five, but a, a bit of a boat race in the second half. It really was. It was a, it was a, a, a tale of two halves. In, in the first half, Jordan Brown, the big guy for, uh, for Louisiana, had his way. Ended up with 25 points, but a lot of those were in the first half. Hase was, uh, was manned up on him, and they just fed the ball inside. And uh, really in the second half, they switched things around. They put Pinkney on Brown. And Louisiana's bigs, man, they had 30 combined rebounds between Brown and Lewis uh, at, the, in Marsh, at the Marshall game Saturday. And so Southern Miss was like, how are we going to shut this guy down? At halftime, Ladner and then uh, Juan Cardona, who uh, really steers the defensive side of the ball, they figured out how to crack the nut. They, they put Tyler Mormon in the game, and he and Pinkney shut down Brown in the second half. And uh, in the, the second half was Hase dominating um, in in the perimeter, he uh, he scored all of his points in the second half after being shut out in the first half. But absolutely amazing um, atmosphere. A couple things that you'd like, Richard. So early on in the game, uh, Crowley and Pinkney hit back to back threes. Southern Miss went up early, and then they they showed this uh, commercial to uh, to to preview baseball season, and they used the Danny Lynch uh, pimp home run walk as. Uh, Hmm. As the uh, against Louisiana as the advertisement, uh, so so that helped, and it was really intense. Like you said, it was it was a boat race, and Coach Bauer always sits courtside. And after a, an, an official call didn't go against Southern Miss, Coach Bauer stood up and did that old school arms cross glare at the referee. So uh, it was just you know it was a lot of stuff going on last <laughs> night, a lot of people there, and it was awesome. That's uh, that's really good, and it's it's cool to see the build up for a game like that. And then the payoff, right? I mean, it's been a long time since there's been a crowd like that inside Reed Green Coliseum. The last thing you want is for 8,000 people to leave disappointed. You, you want the opposite, right? You want 8,000 people to leave going, man, that was fun. Oh, wait, there's another one of these in three days. And there is. There's another one of these now in two days. It's tomorrow, and you want to try and get as many of those people back as you can. It's a joke at Southern Miss. We Eagles soar high and they and they lay really big eggs. And Southern Miss fans over the years have <laughs> have been on the receiving end of that. And so, kind of the joke today with us is that you know Southern Miss's roster is is so young in the sense they haven't been at Southern Miss. They didn't they didn't have any uh, any idea but to win last night. But yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it was what happened on the court in a lot of ways exceeded the hype and and I, I mean Louisiana came in they had a 10 game winning streak they were 20 wins on the season but if it would have been Troy if it would have been South Alabama I feel like the atmosphere would have been the same it was just the fact that that Hattiesburg on a Thursday night had looked forward to this game for for over 10 days the basketball team didn't look past it and took care of business last weekend and I mean there was there was just so many people there last night like Rick Cleveland was was on the court after the game Harold Shaw who played in the NFL the Southern Miss uh, guy, I mentioned Coach Bauer. You know, uh, after the game, Jay Ladner said that the two guys that he wished that could have been there that night was Corky Palmer and, and M.K. Turk, just to see it. Uh, yeah. Because it, it, it really rivaled, you know, that, that late 80s, early 90s atmosphere at Reed Green. Not that gold jacket that Jay Ladner was rocking last night. So a lot of people don't know this. Like in the late 80s, when they won the NIT, they had this thing called Eagle Fever that kind of swept up Hattiesburg. So when you walk down out of the locker room, down into the tunnel, they have this retro um, lit up sign that says Eagle Fever. And of course it's gold. So, uh, so Ladner loves doing that. And, and uh, you know, j just the, the atmosphere of this team, uh, the, the depth, the maturity, it's really paid off for him, guys. He's two wins away from matching in one year what he won in his first three years. That's, uh, that's pretty incredible. Look, there are lots of people that, I mean, you, you alluded to rebounding a second ago. A lot, of, a lot of people love to talk about rebounding and defense. And I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, you got to make shots. First half, Southern Miss goes 11 of 25 from the field, 2 of 8 from behind the arc, and they're down 5 at the half. Second half, they outscore Louisiana by 16. 61.5% shooting from the field and 5 of 8. That's 62.5% from behind the arc. You want to win games, you got to go make shots. At, at halftime, Jay Ladner pulled uh, the, the uh, sh shooting charts from both teams. And what he told his team at halftime 
he said, hey, guys, look at all these shots that were on the rim. And he told specifically Hase, he just said, keep shooting. Like, just keep shooting. These shots are going to go in. One thing that, that we haven't brought up, Crowley got into foul trouble early. And from like the 12 and a half minute mark till 30 seconds to go in the first half, he didn't play because he had two fouls. So they hung in there without Crowley. And it was guys like Donovan Ivory. And then, if, if, guys, if you haven't seen Alvarez play, I, I, I mean, th- this guy legitimately – Go ahead. Didn't he do almost all of his damage in the first half? Like 14 or 16 of his 17 points came in the first half. Is that right? He he did, but he but he had steals. Uh, Southern Miss has this crazy percentage. Uh, it's like 12 every uh, 12.3 percent out of their defensive possessions they get a steal. Hmm. It's like 22nd in the country, and he's he's a lockdown guy uh, that can lock down guards because that's how Louisiana torched Southern Miss last time. But yeah, it was his it was his career high in 17 points. And when they chipped away at the end of the half, went on a 7-2 run to end the half, he had a big uh, and one. He drove down and and uh, pulled a foul. So he was a guy last night. You know, they had 36 points off the bench uh, between between him and 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 Ivory and and some more guys. All right. So in terms of the uh, the net, you uh, you get a little bit of movement there, up six spots to 53 in the net. But it it just continues to feel Luke, and and I just don't know that there's any way around this. Like the Sun Belt Conference is going to be a one bid league this year, and so it's about putting yourself in the best position for the conference tournament. You obviously want the uh, want the double buy, but to do that, you've got to avoid looking ahead, right? I mean, it, it can't be about the last five games of the year. You got ULM coming in tomorrow, which is a quick turnaround after an emotional high. Uh, you got to try to avoid a letdown tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, they were able last week uh, to, to not overlook uh, two road games to get to last night's game. So I, I, I think the approach then is it doesn't matter who's on the schedule. It's just who, who you got next. And ULM was a team, they hadn't been playing well lately, but Southern Miss was real fortunate to get out in January, get out of Monroe with a 65-60 um, victory. I, I do think tomorrow, of course, Eagles have the edge, uh, but they just literally have nine or ten guys, whereas uh, ULM has only been playing about seven guys. But Southern Miss with the ability to have two point guards, because Alvarez is the backup point guard. He's not the starter. Mo Arnold's the starter. And uh, guys like Donovan Ivory and, and uh, Denajay Harris didn't play much last night, even though he started. Not sure if he got banged up or something. But Eagles have legitimately nine or ten guys that are too deep at each, each position to put out there. Sunbelt may be re- rethinking this Southern Miss decision. First place in basketball, picked this week to win the Sunbelt Conference uh, by the, uh, I guess that was by the coaches or media, wh- whoever. Uh, pick that poll, but uh, we're we're a week away, right? Uh, a week, almost exactly away until uh, first pitch of the season. Uh, an exciting time for uh, the start of the baseball season. Tanner Hall, game one. Do we know the rest of the rotation for next weekend? Scott probably won't tell anybody until maybe Wednesday of next week or even Thursday. We've got Oz on Monday, so we'll see what he says. But probably Matt Adams, Nico Mazza, that may be the Saturday, okay. Sunday, or, or Billy Oldham. Uh, but I know today at practice, you'll like this. Etzel had a leadoff triple. Dickerson had an RBI single, and Peto hit a two-run bomb. That's how they went one, two, three today in their first at bat. So uh, a lot more. Uh, I think this lineup offensively is going to fit what Travis Creel wants to do a lot more, being able to run guys a little more. They'll have more, a lot more speed on the bases this year. And, uh, it, yeah, I mean, it's developing. Uh, I, I think we talked uh, the mid-innings, the middle relief is kind of where the question marks should be. But uh, Ostrander will have them ready. Um, 11 first place votes out of, you got 14 teams. I'm assuming coaches are not allowed to vote for their own team. And so that means 12, uh, you got all but two of the, uh, the votes for, uh, for first place in the first year of the Sun Belt. It's going to be a heck of a run. Uh, Tanner Hall, tab preseason pitcher of the year. Uh, Dustin Dickerson, Carson Pato, both on the preseason all conference team. It's, uh, it's setting up to be a fun year. What, one more thing from last night, just really awesome to see, you know, Scott Berry was courtside, Will Hall was, uh, was courtside, talked to, uh, you know, talked to Will a little bit, and he's more fired up about Southern Miss basketball than anybody. So I just love the fact that those guys in the house supporting the other sports because uh, Jay Ladner has supported them as well. I mean, isn't the truth that Will Hall's fired up about everything? Is there anything he doesn't get excited about? Like, if you talk to him, is there anything that he is not excited about? I would guess politics. Eh, I've never heard him bring up that. Me and him both. 
the, uh, the good Lord loves the Eagles. That's usually first out of his mouth. So uh, he, he enjoys it. He's having a good time. Luke, 